I tell people if you're trying to pay the mortgage, it's not that you can't, but you really should focus on having fun at the game first and any prizes I would hope be secondary. If you're on who wants to be a millionaire, it's still okay to tag for the million. But if you win 25000 that's still a great day out, I feel. <laughs> from NCPR, welcome to Northwards. People, ideas, and conversations from and about northern New York, Vermont, and beyond. I'm Mitch Tyke. Support for the Northwards podcast comes from the J.C. Steiniger and M.E. McDonald Charitable Fund at Adirondack Foundation in support of the Adirondack Foundation, building stronger Adirondack communities. I met the game show host, Pat Sajak, once. When I mentioned that to producer Ethan Shanty, he expected the story to end badly for some reason, but actually it was a totally innocuous, maybe even an enjoyable encounter. About 20 years ago, I was a news reporter in Arizona, sent to cover opening day at a new independent baseball minor league. Pat Sajak was there because he was an investor in the league and had been roped into throwing out the first pitch, the ball for which was being delivered for reasons I can't recall, by a falcon. So we were both in the room where Sajak was getting the briefing on what to do or more importantly what not to do when the falcon approached. After the briefing from the falconer was done, I turned to him and asked, how many R's in carry-on? And he thought that was pretty amusing because he was the host of Wheel of Fortune, which requires contestants to spell words to win money. Anyway, I tell you that semi-lame story because this week, for the first time in four decades, Pat Sajak is not the host of Wheel of Fortune. He's retired, replaced by Ryan Seacrest, who I have not met. I don't know if Ryan Vickers has met Ryan Seacrest either, but he definitely met Pat Sajak. That's because Wheel of Fortune was the first of a dozen game shows that the Cornwall native has appeared on, to say nothing of the one where he works now. And the new hosting gig on Wheel is as good a reason as any to revisit a conversation with Ryan Vickers, not Seacrest, who shared the remarkable story of the many, many experiences that have filled his adult life, starting with a list of all of his game show appearances. Right. Uh, so we go back. The start was in 1997 on Wheel of Fortune here in the U.S. Uh, then I am at 2006 Inside the Box in Canada, 2007 Brain Battle in Canada, 2009 Countdown in the U.K., 2012 Ice Cold Cash in Canada, 2013 Motus in France, 2015 The Price is Right in the U.S., um, then we're at 2017, Let's Make a Deal in the U.S., and 2018, pardon me, 2019, a show called Au Suivant, which is based out of Quebec, and that's eight, and I've forgotten one, and that sounds horrible, but there's <laughs> one more that my brain is hurting on right now. So. It'll pop up in the middle of the it conversation, Probably, I'm yes, sure. exactly, so. For people who watch game shows, you know, you often see that, that card that shows up, that electronic card, where they say, you know, if you're going to be in Los Angeles and you'd like to be a contestant, yes. you know, uh, this is how to do it. Or, you know, in the case of uh, of Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy mm -hmm. and those, you know, you can you can audition online. And, it, you know, it seems like such a crapshoot. How, how did you get on the first one and, and how have you gotten on eight more since? <laughs> so Wheel of Fortune happened back in the old days when the Internet was in its infancy. We used to send things called postcards. <laughs> Which and is how I got on Jeopardy. Exactly. And so I sent in 10 postcards and I was living in um, Ingleside, just west of Cornwall, right near Upper Canada Village, if you've ever been there. Uh, I sent off 10 postcards and four weeks later, I arrived home from school one day and my mom had said, you're not going to believe this, but Wheel of Fortune is called. So we we traveled down to Toronto, the big the big smoke, I guess, <laughs> and uh, had to go through the process about an hour and a half, similar probably to something your Jeopardy edition, Mitch. And uh, about two weeks later... Sent a, sent a letter, again, old school, um, <laughs> saying you're in the contestants pool and then you wait for up to a year and a half and there's no guarantee you're going to be pulled out of that pool. They always pull more people than they need. And then about six weeks later, uh, spring of 97, I got a call and we went to Los Angeles, mom and I, and, and taped. And, and you talk about getting on the shows. I've always told people that ask me for advice, be yourself plus about 10 to 15 percent. Because if you are super fake, those people are going to see through it. It's great to have enthusiasm. I get that 100 percent. But you still need to be yourself. Um, try to figure out what might set you a little unique. When I got on The Price is Right many moons ago, and it's like speed dating for game shows. Hi, 
what do you do? Where are you from? And I told them I was Ryan, where I was from, and I was a French teacher. And the um, Do you think that stood out right away? I think that helped that I wasn't from uh, the Los Angeles area. And the gentleman said, let's, uh, let's talk about your French teacher business. And, we, and you want to have that uh, the idea that you engage them in a little bit of conversation. They've got to get through, say, two, 300 people in an hour. So you don't have all day. But he said to me, he said, well, maybe we'll give you a trip to Paris. And I said, <laughs> and I just didn't mean to put on anything. I said, that would be nice. <laughs> and 45 minutes later, Ryan Vickers come on down. So uh, I like to go and have fun. I tell people if you're trying to pay the mortgage, it's not that you can't. But you really should focus on having fun at the game first. And any prizes, I would hope, be secondary. If you're on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, it's still okay to tag for the million. But if you win 25000 that's still a great day out, I feel. <laughs> well, so go back to The Price is Right because yeah. you were talking about the like the, the kind of speed dating yeah. concept here. And I, I, I think people don't realize this, that it's not random people that they're they're drawing out of a hat. That, that that's they, correct. They've actually kind of sussed you out to, to presumably see who's going to be the most fun to have on the show. And, and that's exactly it, that we went through, the time I was on in 2015, we did groups about 12 of us, then you sit in line and people are like, oh, Ryan, you did a great job. I said, well, I've been here before, it didn't work out. And you know, you hear stories of people going dozens of times and maybe getting picked or maybe never picked. And it's just a matter of having that enthusiasm. We went into the studio. I was on my own that day. I got sat, which I think is hysterical, by three people from Montreal because reasons. <laughs> and they're wonderful people and uh, we've stayed in touch. And the one gentleman will keep reminding me how I didn't win the car because I didn't listen to him. So je m'excuse, Martin, toujours. Um, but uh, I got in the studio and they put dance music, music on. I thought, I don't want to give them any reason not to pick me. And I stood up and danced. And maybe I looked foolish. I didn't care. I was at The Price is Right. Like, this is the stuff that dreams are made of, right? Well, and how can you possibly look foolish on The Price is Right? I, I mean, it's just par for the course, but you have fun with it. I truly believed that when my name was called, I didn't hear it, by the way, that that place, imagine the loudest concert, but put it in a, a theater for 300 people. It's deafening in there, and they hold up a card with your name, which you get to keep at the end, which is a great oh, souvenir. Cool. It's framed at home. <laughs> And it comes up, it said Ryan Vickers, and I thought I calmly stood up and walked down to contestant row. <laughs> Four months later when the show aired, I found that I was flailing, running down. I forgot to high-five the people in my in my row because they're right, you do sometimes black out in these things. Not in a bad way, but you're just hoping that your brain and your mouth and your legs and all parts of you are working the together. Marker Studio at CBS in Hollywood. It's the price is right. Ryan Vickers, come on down! Stephanie Derringer, come on Well, and, and that's got to be down. so much different than, than, you know, I don't know about all the other game shows that you've been on, but it has to be so much different because with Wheel of Fortune, you know you're going to be on yes. the show. And, and with, you know, all these other shows, you know, you, they've, they've called you, so you know this mm-hmm. is the day that they are going to be taping my episode, whereas Agreed. you walk into the studio at The Price is Right, and you want to, I mean, I, I've, I've not been on The Price is Right, but you would think you'd want to be able to remember everything, mm-hmm. but, but the element of surprise has to to be maybe the the underrated part of uh, it, of competing. It's here. and that's I could sit and watch just the first four contestants on Prices Right get called down all day because the happiness. And I've been I went to a taping a couple of years later. Obviously not allowed to be on the show because enough time hadn't passed. I just the excitement of people jumping up. Uh, there's a Prices Right live stage show that tours around Canada in the U S. And I think I've seen it eight times and I've not been picked. That for example is random. Not the show itself, but the but you 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 pay for your your tickets and whatnot, and the same thing. These people, this life goal realized, and and it's just it's a processing problem. I went home, stayed staying at my friends, and tried to write down everything that happened. And it took three four days to remember most of it. And still watching the show four months later, oh yeah, that happened. So <laughs> it's it's very much um, what you say exactly true. Going to Wheel of Fortune. I knew that was there. That was going to be my day again. They bring extras in case someone falls ill or someone just doesn't work out that day for whatever reason. But Price Right and Let's Make a Deal, not only you don't know you're going to be on, you have to sit on it. And those were probably the most four months of excruciation <laughs> of my life. But I was able to basically fool everyone into watching the show without telling them I was going to be on the show. And that was half the fun for me. 
I had I had a good time and people were just they know me well enough to know that I really am passionate for the genre of television and that, you know, it's but it's price is right. We stay home on our sick days and and you know, as we're recording this, Bob yeah. Barker has just passed away. And I thought, especially in the nineties, daytime game shows weren't a huge thing at that time, just game shows in general. And that was it was. I'm very much a eat my lunch at eleven in the morning because that's when Price is Right is on, right? So let's go back to to ninety seven when you went on Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. I mean, did that like turn something on in your mind that like this is something I want to do from here on out? Um, a hundred percent. I basically remember watching game shows as a kid and being. You know, a bit envious of people because I thought, oh, I don't live in the United States. This is harder to get these shows. And we had Canadian game shows, but even that, they were in Toronto. And we had one solitary year of a Canadian version of Supermarket Sweep. <laughs> and I was one year too young to be on the show. And I was just frustrated like you couldn't believe. And I actually got to meet the host years ago for another project I was working on. He said, Ryan, you're passionate about this. Why weren't you on the show? I said, I was so annoyed with my age at that time. I always thought I was born 10 years too late. Sale the Century, Scrabble, all those 80s game shows. But um, the joke around the house was then when I got on Wheel of Fortune, there was no more winning game show arguments for my parents. They're mm-hmm. like, we get it. So, you know, as many I've been on, I, there's tons of others. You know, I ended up doing a Win Ben's Tides Money tryout. They had a contest in Canada. I won one of the 30 edition spots over the phone. Got two out of 10 questions right. Fun fact, Mitch, barbecue sauce doesn't go at Eggs Benedict. That's what I learned that mm. day. So, yeah, it's not a, not a good idea. So. It's just something I played Reach for the Top when I was a kid, which is basically our high school version of of Quiz Bowl. And I thought, this is just something I want to do with my life. And seeing people getting on game shows and whether you win a lovely parting gift or a new house or a million dollars or, you know, a brand new car, (laughs) these people's lives are changed. And I wanted to be part of that fun. Do you ever sit back and, and watch <laughs> these episodes again? I thought you were like, do you ever sit back? Do you stop, Ryan? <laughs> um, yes, I will. Um, a lot of times if people or uh, sometimes it comes up pretty early in conversations. I don't try to bring it up, but it, it does naturally come up sometimes. I know <laughs> no, no one who knows me like, sure, Ryan, whatever. Yeah, I have fun doing that. And sometimes people are like, you were on The Price is Right? How'd you do? I was like, do you want to know or shall I give you the link? <laughs> and they're like, let's watch the link or give me a little summary. It's fun to watch it with people and especially younger people who don't realize I was on Wheel of Fortune just when they went to the touch screens. We, I missed doing the rotating letters with Vanna <laughs> by about three months. But it's fun to watch. And even if it's little clips here and there, uh, people enjoy that. Wait, you can speak French? Yeah, that that's that's what I do, and and uh, it's good fun. I'll bring it up once in a while, and uh, we joked. Someone uh, so we made a gif of me flailing down the aisle. And Price is right. <laughs> like this is my life in six seconds. So this is a weird question to ask, but I I'm feel sure, like I, I, I'm I, sure it's not. But go ahead. Uh, so. Well, and I, it's probably not. I'm probably not the first person to ask this to you. So so I think about my experience on Jeopardy, and really the yeah. only physical part. By, by of the that. way, well done on that because I've tried out multiple times for Jeopardy <laughs> and uh, never really hit the cut. But go on. Sorry. Yes, my bad luck was to to do it before they doubled the prize money. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> do you get retroactive to that? Uh, no, sadly, no. Okay. I, I do not. Um, <laughs> but uh, but the only physical the only physical part of that. It was just the buzzers. You know? Oh, and, the buzzers. And figuring out the buzzers. Wheel of Fortune, The mm-hmm. Price is Right, both have these large wheels. <laughs> <laughs> How heavy are those wheels, uh, maybe in comparison to each other? And what does it feel like to spin that oh, wheel on Wheel it of Fortune? Was, I, I, just the happiness of being in that day at the studio. Um, so for Wheel of Fortune, it may have changed since then. But what I was told is you lean as far as you can to the right You pick a peg, you sort of wrap your fist around it, and you pull it towards you until it's right in front of your body. And it's a pull, then push, pull, then push. So one of the things happened with Wheel of Fortune, I was in the last, one of the last seasons where you could actively be on more than one show. I won my show, was able to come back for a second time. They had a Friday finals format going on. So I taped the Thursday and the Friday. And by the end of the show, I, there's this massive red mark. <laughs> I've been told it weighs about two tons. I was lucky enough to have enough strength to get it around roughly about one time each revolution, which does help. And you can sort of gauge where you are. I had a spin. The only multiple letter was 
there was two L's. I got it for thirty five hundred a piece. I'm thinking I'm nineteen years old. Mm. We're gonna take this seven thousand run, even though they had a wedge called jackpot. And had I spun it up, I would have been the record holder. But then bankrupt was two before. I thought you don't risk that. So there was a lot of practice. There was a red mark on my hand, but I was like, again, occupational hazard. We're good. A wheel of fortune. You get to practice that multiple times. I was, the show. I was wondering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hundred percent. Price is right. They basically take you up and. You just got to honk on that thing. And the best comparison I've ever heard is like pulling down a garage door. You need sort of that force. And I just wailed on that thing. And I thought, I know who I want to say hello to. And I still (laughs) still had a full revolution of clapping, right? (laughs) But it's... Uh, you know, I got 80. I didn't get to spin again, which is fine. I, I was I was lucky enough to advance the showcase. But part of you, you want to be able to do it multiple times. Price Right Live, the first time I saw it, we drove, I think, six hours from where I live to Detroit, I think it was. Niagara Falls, one of those. And you could pay $20 extra at the end of the show and, <laughs> and spin the spin wheel, wheel. Wow. and get a T-shirt and get a, ho- a picture with the host. Um, and I spun a dollar. That time, and there's a wonderful YouTube clip of me losing my mind, even though I won nothing. <laughs> and you can see, like, I think I spun it so hard, like a bolt flew out of it. So, but yeah, it those are hard. And you know, there is a rule in Wheel of Fortune called beating the house. You oh, five thousands four wedges away. Uh, mm. Let me just do it. That's called beating the house. You have to give it like a good spin. Yeah. You can aim, but you can't. You know, I'm always impressed by the people on Price is Right who try to finesse it, (laughs) finesse it to get that dollar. It's like, oh, I don't have that kind of look. I'm just going to go for it and enjoy my time. It's uh, I talked to someone else about this. It's it's the tacticalness of it. Right. And the same thing. We had a buzzer on a show that I I was on called uh, Brain Battle. Maybe that's the one I didn't mention. And at that time, I was coaching Quiz Bowl. So it was a. An interesting situation in that I interviewed on a Thursday and it was a live show. So they need four new people every day. They said, can you come Monday? No. Tuesday? Okay. And I took my buzzers home and I watched the show and I practiced. So I, I feel like I had a little bit of an upper hand. There is a round of me winning something like 400 to 100 and I genuinely feel bad, but you're like, well, you got to play the game the best you can, right? So, well, and in my case, uh, you know, uh, I I did quiz bowl growing up also, but yeah. I was, you know, I was uh, 30 when I was on uh, Jeopardy and didn't have ready access to buzzers, so I used a Parker ballpoint pen I, standing behind a wingback chair. That and that's what I hear <laughs> for people that are once you eventually find out, not eventually, but if you're lucky enough to get that call to go on Jeopardy is try to simulate as best you yep. can. I heard Ken Jennings used to use that stackable ring toy that babies would use <laughs> yeah, yeah. just to have the width of that, right? Yep. Because it's not just the click, but it's also trying to figure out how big that signaling device is, right? Well, and and you know, to say nothing about the the various mental games uh did, did right. that, So here's did my that... here's my secret. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> and I didn't know that it would have a uh, have an effect as I was doing it. But mm-hmm. when I was on Jeopardy, I held the buzzer behind my back. I don't think that's a bad idea, right? I, it's and, whatever you're most comfortable with. Yeah. I've heard people like leave it on the desk, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and I was holding, you know, I had one hand, like I had one hand clamped over my other wrist. Mm-hmm. And the idea in my my you know my uh, mind cuz I, I you know I had practiced with it but I'd never practiced like against other people. Yeah, that makes sense. Was that like a they couldn't see if I was flailing away on the buzzer. That's a good point. And B, it sort of kept my muscles under control so I wasn't wasting any like wasn't wasting any any movement on anything else. You know, all I was doing and this was probably completely overthinking it, but I filmed three shows and I had lunch between the first and the second show. And, and that's a lot of people don't realize that Wheel and Jeopardy do multiple shows a day. And and so and of course, like I went from like being one of the guys, uh, you know, in the in the contestant pool to sitting by myself at lunch, having oh, just one. Uh, yeah. Did you have to sit by yourself or just no one wanted to talk to you? Because that sounds so sad if well, that's the case. So. I, I think I wasn't allowed to I wasn't allowed to mingle with the with the contestants who are not yet on. Oh, and I so, never thought about that. But I did overhear people at the other table talking about why is he holding his hand behind his back? And I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm going to hold my hand behind my back the next game. 
today you actually work on a game show. Yeah, I actually work for three game shows. <laughs> so um, the first one that I that I started working with is something called Reach for the Top, and that has been on various TV networks on and off over the years. And one of the I'm the host and have been to the host since 2013. And I love it. I live vicariously through all the contestants because I played in high school and we never we did okay, but never made it out of our league to the provincial championships. One of the greatest things I get to say is I have a position once held by Alex Trebek. And that's like a huge thing for me. <laughs> and you know, honored. So I guess that means that when they reboot classic concentration in like 2045, I get that job. <laughs> and when Ken and Mayim are done, I'll get that in 2056. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, but I do that. I work for a show uh, which is on Game TV, which is something similar to a game show network in Canada called Pop Wiz. And I'm the uh, creative consultant and also on set judge for that, which is a great experience. And we, it's a on location show. So we travel around filming at various communities in Canada. And I also work at Family Feud Canada. <laughs> and that came about uh, because I emailed the audience corner to see if there was any positions available last season and uh, there were and I got a spot that way and so I'm on my second season of doing that and I it's perfect I, I love uh, I work in the audience department so checking people in making sure they've um, they filled out there. We're not going to spoil the results. We won't yell answers until we're told to yell answers. Show me number two. That kind of thing. Um, and just getting them in the audience. And sometimes I'm called upon is like, oh, ask Ryan. He'll know this obscure fact about Family Feud. And invariably, <laughs> usually, I mean, I could I could hold it in, but I, I, I like to think that I know a little bit about game shows, but I love it. And I get to see a comedy show four times a day, three or four days a week. Um, and we have such wonderful families. It airs on the CBC in Canada. And so for our version, Family of Canada, they really work hard to get families from across Canada. We cover almost every province and territory at least once in a season. And these people are having the times of their lives. And I'm, I, I love being there. You, I walk half an hour a day to take public transit down to Toronto. I live north of Toronto nowadays. And... You can't wipe the grin off my face. I get in, I get everything set up, I put my name tag on, I get my uh, crew badge on and everything. It's just, it's a pleasure to be there. It really is. Lots of clapping, lots and lots and lots of clapping. Yeah, you're so. saying before we uh, before you got rolling, uh, occupational hazard, you start getting open wounds on your yeah, hands? Yeah, it's, that's, uh, I, I, but I have no shame in that. That's okay. That's, uh, you know, you put some some eucalyptus lotion or whatever. Uh, have you thought of like a soccer goalie gloves? So it's funny. That actually got suggested when I signed on, I guess, for the second season. We're on our fifth season. I've, I've been it for the last two. People were like, you're going to bring gloves this year. I was like, but that muffles the sound. <laughs> so a lot of good answers. It's up there. Jerry, our host, Jerry D, is a comedian, and he's wonderful at what he does. And uh yeah, it's it's just an absolute pleasure, and I think because I have that enthusiasm along with the rest of the staff, the audience feeds into that as well. So I, I, I was trying to wrap my head around this. So you, you've done these, you've been on these nine television mm-hmm. game shows and a couple of podcasts and a yeah. radio game show. Uh, you've worked on the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, you've worked on the Pan Am Games. Yep. Uh, the World University Games, mm-hmm. uh, probably some things that I, I, I don't know about. Um, <laughs> FIFA in Toronto 12 years ago, uh, so yes, good and, times. So. And the World Cup is coming up. Uh, that is and... circled for 2026, so yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I think about you and then I think about, you know, somebody like Dick Cavett or something, yes. you know, and, and I wonder, are you on the verge of, of being famous for being famous? <laughs> <laughs> I have been very flattered. There has been a couple times uh, this year, um, one of the things I do in Pop Wiz is give the contestant briefing, just a reminder, here are the rules. Uh, so some of you may be familiar, some of you are not. I want you to know all the rules so we're even keel. If you've got questions, it's time to ask. If you think about something, let us know. We want to make sure everyone's, no one gets an advantage, but everyone's on the same level playing field. And we were standing, it was the first episode of season two we were taping, and all of a sudden, this lady in her late 20s, early 30s, Mr. Vickers. <laughs> Hi. Reach for the top, right? And I'm working on a completely different show. And so the the joke was our host, the entire season we're filming, Mr. Vickers, we have a question. And the whole season it became a running gag. But so I guess to a point of that, I was really flattered. We had an audience member come to Family Feud last year who had seen my work on a game show documentary. And I was truly flattered. So it's very like low key. Um 
you know, I, I will now put out my candidacy for Dancing with the Stars Canada if that ever comes up. <laughs> That's fine. Um, and, the, and the producers are listening to this particular show. A hundred percent. No <laughs> doubt in my mind. I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Go ahead. After having all these experiences, do you worry that someday it'll get less special the more you do? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I have been lucky to have so many different experiences. And and I think something like Family Feud Canada, people are like, oh, you show up, you you know, go and have fun. I was like, but this is what I love. And every day there's new families and new questions and new audience members. And we have we have a, a, a gentleman, uh, shout out to Brock, who I think by the end of the season will be just shy of seeing 200 episodes taped. And he just <laughs> loves the show. And we, we're lovely to have, have him. Um, I don't think so. I, I hope that game shows never go away. They do ebb and flow. And it may be, you know, 10 years from now, there's limited game shows on again. But I'm just as happy. Um, I've been MC for weddings and we've <laughs> built game shows into it. My friend's wedding about 15 years ago in Moncton, New Brunswick, we played Price is Right for her husband-to-be's G.I. Joe's. <laughs> and then we played we played Family Feud. And Mitch, honestly, that was one of the funniest things that ever happened when I've done sort of these game show events. And we were down, we set it up, we, we modified the rules because there's a hundred people and I'm running around with a microphone like I'm a talk show host, I guess, you know, old school Donahue, that kind of thing. <laughs> and the question was, name something specific that the couple likes about their apartment. The one side I'd struck out. And basically we had two specific captains and the 12 year old was captain on the one side. And I hear the specific answer was the washer dryer. I was like, this is great. This kid is going to get it right. He's going to be the hero of the wedding. And I say, okay, for the steal and the win, because they're all questions about the married couple. What's your answer? Ryan, it's got to be the bed. And the whole place, which was a lot of, <laughs> uh, not a lot of, you know, it was more like 30 and ups. Right. Just howls. And I thought, well, I never thought I'd say this. Show me the bed. <laughs> it wasn't there. But it just like, that's, that's 15 years ago and it's ever etched in my memory. So game shows have this wonderfulness of, Having bringing people together, my my sister's a college professor in Northern Ontario. She brought me in to talk about game shows as a therapeutic recreational tool. Only two people in that room knew Family Feud before I got in there, but within five minutes, that's why the format works because it's so easy to catch on. It's not what the right answer is; is what people think the right answer is. So, it's interesting. You know, we we were talking about you know the the Price is Right as uh, as something you watched when you were sick and home at mm-hmm. eleven o'clock in the morning or. Yeah. 10 Central. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Uh, but I have to think, uh, you know, for, for people who are feeling, uh, you know, depressed or b- bummed out or, or you know, going through things, uh, watching people on a game show is not a bad way to, uh, to, to help your mood a little bit. Well, and, that's, and then there's the happiness of it. Yeah, I, I get it that some people get out of their game show experiences. It's maybe not what came out of it. But you might as well have fun with it, see how it goes, and you'll have a memory for life. And I'm lucky enough to have multiple memories for life, which I know is not always the case for everyone and feel very, very uh, gracious I've had that opportunity. But it's true. You can't – I can sit for probably hours, especially now with YouTube, and just watch compilations of clips. And, you know, I some days when I have a bad day, I'll pop on social media. Give me your funniest game show clip, right? And and one that sticks out, there is a show called – it was a most ex- – MXC that was on Spike TV and it was a dub of a Japanese format but they dubbed it in English and it's a lot of people falling off. Marriage in America's Funniest Home Videos as a game show. <laughs> kind of like a wipeout when they all have the big red balls and things like that. Anyway, and this lady, she has to do a math problem while she's on this little mini roller coaster but if you get it wrong, <laughs> you get dumped in a pool full of mud. It was just, it was, you know, water with that mud That sounds like a it, Japanese so. game show. Yeah, exactly. And, it, and she didn't hold on tight. And you just watch her come to this coaster and it hits the brakes. Flump. She just falls in the pool. And I can watch that for days. And I'm not, I hope that I'm laughing with the person and not at the person. And that's what I tell people. I said, we're all laughing with you. There's a lot of people. I've talked to people that are French first language. They're like, no way would I ever go on a game show, let alone in French. Because I'm not that, you know, or second language teachers, I should say, I'm not that confident. I'm like, well, you've got to try these things. And I have memories for life. And it was a great experience to go. That was a great time. But the best part of that was going with my dad to spend 10 days in France. And I think as adults, we don't travel enough with our parents. And, you, you know, it's been 10 years, but we look on that trip fondly. Right? Yeah, so. that's, that's great. Well, Ryan Vickers, it's been really just a uh, 
a delight to uh, to kind of vicariously experience <laughs> these uh, these game shows and these trips around the world with you. Thank you so much, Mitch. I appreciate the opportunity. Ryan Vickers grew up in the Cornwall area. In addition to a stint teaching high school French, he's appeared on a dozen or so game shows on a variety of platforms in a variety of countries and now lives outside Toronto, where he works on the Canadian edition of Family Feud. Survey says it's time for the closing credits with our very own Ethan Shanty. Northwards is an NCPR podcast production. The show is written, edited, and produced by Mitch Tyke with digital production supervision by me, Ethan Shanty. Caitlin Kelly handles our social media. Bill Hanel is our digital director, and Doyle Dean is our production manager. Music is by the Wickmore Jazz Trio of Plattsburgh. To support this show and find more podcasts, visit ncpr.org. This is NCPR, North Country Public Radio.